Turnpike Sports is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Welcome to Turnbike Sports. I'm Dave Weishaddle, and as always, I'm joined by my producer and co-host, Doug Weishaddle. Doug, exciting Super Bowl down in Atlantic City. We had a great time down there. I want to thank everyone who said hello and came around. And uh, Always ama- a good time in Atlantic City. Uh, amazing game, amazing game. Uh, I don't know how well you did on your bets. I think I did better on the prop bets than <laughs> any other bet that I uh, did on the actual physical game. Let me put it this way. I sucked all the way around. <laughs> I, I think I nailed about maybe three prop bets. Okay, well, we're going to recap that at the end of the show. We'll do our uh, Super Bowl recap. And you know what? As soon as the Super Bowl was over, MLB, uh, I guess you would call it the hot stove period, that got into full swing. Uh, Mookie Betts Boy, and David it. Price go to Los Angeles Dodgers, who now are... I guess odds on favor in the National League to get to the World Series. Both, uh, both right now, the Dodgers and the Yankees are plus one hundred and fifty. I got MLB would love having a New York team and a Los Angeles team in the World Series. Is that a ratings bonanza for Te- the MLB? Technically, would be two original New York teams. Absolutely, Dodgers. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that was actually kind of interesting. They needed a third team to do the deal. They got the third team with the Twins. It looks like. From what I'm seeing, the Red Sox may have gotten a closer out of it. The pitcher that's coming I, over I is know. supposedly strong arm enough to be a closer, so we'll see. But again, the Red Sox keep saying they're not trying to get you know get cheaper or lower. Well, salary. yeah, but they're under the luxury tax, they are which, now. which seems to be priority one for them. But uh, hey, we got a great show coming up. Uh, I'm going to have part two of my interview with Martin Harris. Martin is a longtime writer and reporter and a teacher at American Studies at UNC. Charlotte, and the author of the new book, Poker and Pop Culture. Then after that, we're going to have the Turnpike Sports Book Report, where we talk about what's going on, the book uh, sports books across the country. Uh, exciting weekend for them. Big and weekend. Profitable weekend for them. Not and, as much as you think. <laughs> well, we'll guess, talk about that. Down, we'll we'll down. talk about that. And um, Well, like I said, it was a busy week in sports, so let's take a trip down the turnpike. And today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store available in over 95 cities across North America. Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Exit one. Okay, we had another. I guess this is considered a new deal in sports betting, or is it an expansion? Well, I, if I know what you're talking about, I, if if it's the FanDuel Scientific Games, I guess it's technically it's both. It's an expansion into the U.S., but I think Scientific Games and FanDuel do stuff in Europe. Well, Scientific Games and Flutter. Okay, yeah, that, which is that's the really current, the that's really who the deal is between Scientific and Flutter. Which Flutter is the, the owner of used to be FanDuel. Patty Power, Betfair. They own Fanduel and TVG, but uh, Scientific Games and Flutter. I, I don't know why they chose Flutter, but okay. Uh, they have now agreed in the United States to have uh, Fanduel will now have uh, Scientific Games power their sports betting and online casino operations. Uh, they Fanduel already had an online casino launch in Pennsylvania just recently, and that was run by the Patty Power Betfair platform. So now they have a deal with Scientific Games where they're going to come in and power all the sports book technology and also the online casinos as Fanduel expands across the country. 
Oh, sounds good. Should be interesting to see. I mean, they, uh, they've been doing very well in Europe, the two companies, Flutter and Scientific Games. This is a big deal with Scientific Games doing the sports book technology and the online casino stuff because it counters what DraftKings did when they acquired SB Tech. <laughs> but SB Tech is actually an in-house now for DraftKings, technically. Okay. But I, this is still going to be two separate companies. I think they're still trying to work out everything. There was some speculation whether this was going to happen or not. Uh, it looks like it's going to because Scientific Games released a yeah. statement saying they are going to be doing this. Well, it, look, it's uh, they're two great companies. Uh, I like FanDuel. I have FanDuel on my cell phone right now, and I use it a lot for sports betting. So, uh, no, they're, they're great companies, and I'm, I'm sure I'll see uh, – see the progress throughout the year with them well both uh, companies are doing extremely well and again scientific games is expanding uh they bought a they merged with nyx gaming last year so uh it all fits in with the online casino stuff as well as the sports book exit two now what's interesting this exit i've been usually reserving for esports and usually it's the first-person shooter, Fortnite, uh, League of Legends. We're going a little old school here because okay. <laughs> I just found out that they are going to start building Atari-branded hotels. Hotels, okay. They're going. To you mean I can actually go and ask for the Pitfall Suite, if that's what we're talking about? As or? a matter of fact, you can. All right. <laughs> some, some of them are going to be, according to the press release from Atari that we got, some of the hotel rooms themselves are going to be modern in terms of they're going to look like ready. You know, remember that movie Ready Player One? They're going to be that modern as okay. well as some are going to be retro. The old Atari 2600 games are going to have themed rooms for those, like Pac-Man, uh, Pitfall, that sort of thing. Uh, they have already started the construction of the first one in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And so there's going to be eight of them. Is this, uh, do they know the locations yet? Or Well, the first one's in Phoenix, and that's going to be completed in 18 to 24 months. Okay. They're also planning Las Vegas, Denver, Chicago, Austin, Texas, All right. Seattle, San Francisco, and San Jose. All right. So nothing in the Northeast? No. Okay. So the Northeast is, ex- is excluded from Atari, I guess. Well, the reasons for these locations... They're the hotbed of esports right now in the United States. Okay, all right. There's really nothing. It makes northeast. sense. Okay, it makes sense. It's a marketing thing. Yeah. Okay, I got it. it. It's it's a marketing, but it's also something where they're going to be not only attracting the retro crowd for the Atari brand, people that grew up on Atari. They're also going to be building state of the art venues associated with these. Uh, hotels. Oh, so they're, they're going to be attached to the hotels. Okay, they're going to have right. esports tournaments. I'll check it out. If they have stuff. the old games. Yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, it, 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 it's inter- <laughs> it's an interesting melding of the uh, the two brands. So uh, so it, it's uh, one of those things where uh, retro meets modern, and uh, Atari still has a lot of uh, love from uh, everybody else out there. Two Christmases ago, I got a Atari. Uh, I guess it was I don't know what that was called. Atari Throwback, where it didn't have the cassettes. But uh, you have the console and has already the games built in. I have all the classic games like Tank Battle. I think it even has Pong. I, you know, but it has Pitfall and it's uh, everything but Pac-Man. Yars Revenge, which was my favorite game. It has Yars Revenge, so I was playing Yars Revenge a lot. So, well, the one thing I liked about that, all the games are self-contained. In the yeah, unit. no, there's no cartridges to put in. It was that, all that's the only thing that thing. I kind of missed that component. part. But so. you know what? It's a it's a space saver because you don't have to stack the cartridges. Sure, sure. Exit three. Even though we have several different tours going on with golf around the around the world right now, in 2022 they're planning the launch of a global golf league. Okay. And no, this, this is actual golf. This is not video game golf. This right? is not video this game is golf. Actual golf. This is actual golf. What's going to happen? The Premier Golf League. It's scheduled to launch in January of 2022. With an eight-month season and ten U.S.-based events, the uh, so there's going to be a lot of international events as well, and there's a two hundred forty million dollar total prize fund. Okay, now this isn't like a team concept. This is isn't like the Ryder Cup. This is individual players playing their tournaments, right? It's individual players, okay. but it's by invitation only. Oh, okay. And whoever gets selected to play in these this uh, international tournament, uh, they're going to be recruiting. 48 top players from around the world, and these players will be awarded part ownership of a franchise that's going to be like a team 
concept, but they're going to be individual players under certain teams, like a conference kind of thing. All right. Well, this should be interesting. I don't know. I'm trying to picture it, but I guess it'll come into shape. Yeah. 20, when is it? 20, 2022. 2022. Okay. And they've got plenty of time to talk to, to everybody about because from what I understand, even though the format is really interesting where they're going to have a champion decided after the 17th event of the overall eight-month season, uh, they're going to have a playoff system in place, mm-hmm. and then they're going to have a champion overall crown for the inaugural season. Problem is, they've tried to reach out to the main PGA tours and the European tours. They've all dismissed the idea of working with this group. Okay. So it'll all be right. interesting to see if it actually comes to yeah. fruition. So you're saying there's an uphill battle. Yeah, there's a yeah. dogleg coming up, and all they right. got to read yeah. it. Yeah. So we'll see exactly what happens here. Exit four. Last but not least, Seattle's hockey team may be getting a new, uh, a, well, not new name, but well, Seattle's its getting first a new name. hockey. Team. Well, they, they've had they've had the franchise in place for about two years now. Okay, uh, they have been deciding what the name will be. Okay, and uh, it was leaked that the name is going to be the Seattle Kraken. Now, this isn't official yet, is it? Not official. The team has denied that they're using Kraken. Okay. And they they had a, they had a nice tweet where they had all this sea uh, sea and fish kind of uh, uh, euphemisms in it. So they did a playful little tweet saying they. they I I, I think I've seen. I don't know if this was by fans or by independent people or by whoever. I think they were tweeting or social media. Uh, it, the Seattle Kraken, you know, when I think of Kraken, I'm thinking of the uh, Clash of the Titans, the original one with Harry Hamlin and right. people like that. But that that Kraken. But someone, <laughs> the logo I saw was an octopus. Well, if you remember I'm not, in... <laughs> I'm not uh, sure if I uh, like that. Well, if you remember, uh, for all the literary guys out there, um, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Oh, yeah. The giant octopus. They refer to it as the Kraken. Okay. See, when I think Kraken, I think of Clash of the Titans. Right. Most people so. do nowadays, but it's a uh, right now the logo looks like a uh, an octopus wrapped well, I, around. Well, the I hockey don't know stick. if that's the official logo. I'm just saying I saw that on that social was, that media. Was, that was actually drawn. That, that was actually drawn up by somebody associated with the company, supposedly. Oh, oh what company? NHL Seattle. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, what was interesting? I didn't like the names they threw away, though. Well, they actually not. were going to go from what everyone is saying. Um, they were looking at the sockeyes. Yeah, I know they have to. They they want to name the team after something that's important in the area or something that's uh, recognizable with the area. But you know, sockeyes. Well, really? they couldn't use it. Why? There's a trademark issue. Someone owns sockeyes. Is another team owns sockeyes. Is it a minor league baseball team? That just sounds like a minor league baseball team name. It's a romance novelist. Okay. Romance novel writer Jamie Davenport of Shelton, Washington State, has a Seattle Sockeyes book series. I don't even know what that is. What is the Seattle Sockeyes book series? I've never heard of it either, but she owns the trademark for Seattle for Sockeyes. Okay. For Seattle Sockeyes. And she had her lawyer reach out to the team. All right. Now, she she said it wasn't to stop them. He She had her lawyer reach out to NHL Seattle to tell them they have the trademark Seattle Sockeyes, they would be willing, since it's only for the book series, not for any sports teams or anything mm-hmm. else, they would be interested in working out something where they would consent to them using it. Oh, that's nice. They were open them. to talking to them. So? NHL Seattle never responded to them. Really interesting. So they supposedly they have dropped the name Sockeyes from consideration. Well, maybe consideration. They, that wasn't really in their sights anyway. The Sockeyes, I mean, that was a name that was considered, but not really considered, you know, as priority for their name. Well, so we'll see what happens. It. But right I'm not, now, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm jury's still out on Kraken for me. Well, they, <laughs> the the team has issued a non denial denial about what the the, the name thing? no the name Kraken Kraken oh, yeah. Okay. So we'll see if that actually comes to fruition. Interesting. And today's trip down the turnpike was brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. 
And to get in touch with Turnpike Sports, you can call or text us at 609-512-5910. That's our calling and our text uh, hotline there, 609-512-5910. At Turnpike Sports uh, on Facebook and Twitter, info at turnpikesportsradio.com is our email address. And don't forget, you can subscribe to the show through Pandora Podcast, radio.com, the radio.com app, I'm sorry. Uh, Also subscribe, it's distributed through iHeartMedia, iTunes, Stitcher, we also have our uh, Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and YouTube channels all available. So uh, head on over to TurnpikeSportsRadio.com and uh, uh, click on the Smart TV button or watch uh, some of the shows on YouTube. And stick around because later at the end of the show we're going to have our Super Bowl recap. We're also going to have the Turnpike Sports Book Report where we talk about what's going on in the sports books across the country. But after this, I'm going to have part two of my interview with Martin Harris. Martin Harris is a writer and reporter, a teacher in American Studies at UNC Charlotte, and the author of the new book, Poker and Pop Culture. We're going to be talking about online casinos, online poker, sports betting, and anything in the news regarding gambling. So stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. Hey, this is Dave Weishuttle from Turnpike Sports with this week's Bet Flash. Scientific Games and FanDuel have inked a partnership deal. According to the agreement, Scientific Games will provide technology for FanDuel's online casino and sports betting businesses across the United States. Scientific Games already provides these services for FanDuel's parent company, Flutter Entertainment, in Europe. There are lots of prop bets in the Super Bowl, and one lucky better won $230,000 on two of them. According to the Action Network, a better with the Twitter handle at Gamble Balls posted a $10,000 ticket for the Chiefs to score 31 points at 16 to 1 odds and a $3,500 ticket for the 49ers to score 20 points at 20 to 1 odds. And finally, if you had the over for the Patrick Mahomes rushing prop bet, your night didn't end on a high note. Before the last possession, Mahomes had 44 yards rushing with an over-under at some books of 36.5 yards. As a result of three kneel downs that cost the Chiefs 15 yards, Mahomes' final rushing yards fell to 29. That's a bad beat. From the seaside to the desert, from the betting lines to the sites online, Turnpike Sports has got you covered. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Turnpike Sports. Having a rough morning after a long night out? That's why there's Morning Recovery. Morning Recovery is the flagship product of More Labs, and it's scientifically engineered to outsmart rough mornings. Use promo code RADIO15 at morelabs.com and get 15% off of your first purchase of Morning Recovery or any of their other great products. That's RADIO15 at morelabs.com to take advantage of this great promo of 15% off of your first purchase. Morning Recovery from More Labs, so you can work hard, play hard, and live life without compromise. Auto Accident Help Desk is a marketing agency connecting callers with attorneys. Providers pay a fee for advertising services. I love getting my kids ready and driving them to school. But a careless driver can change your life in an instant. And insurance companies want to settle on the cheap. Auto Accident Help Desk connects victims with powerful lawyers. They fight for you. I called Auto Accident Help Desk and got help for my pain and suffering. Don't let an insurance company take advantage of you. Our attorneys fight and beat big insurance every day. Call 800-757-1255. 800-757-1255. If you've been injured in an automobile accident in the last six months, you owe it to yourself to make this free call with no obligation. We're available 24-7 to help you get the money you deserve for your pain and suffering. Auto Accident Help Desk helps accident victims like you every day. Call 800-757-1255. 800-757-1255. That's 800-757-1255. Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff that will spice up your bedroom is even better. Just go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item for 50% off, and then we'll load on the free stuff. Just enter this very exclusive code, BABE16, at checkout, and you'll get 10 tantalizing free gifts, including a sexy item for him, a special toy for her, and a third item you'll both enjoy. And six extra special bonus items that are sure to rev your engine, pique your curiosity, Mm. and even blow you away. Plus... 
free shipping. Always sent in discreet packaging. Go to adamandeve.com now. Get 50% off plus the 10 free gifts when you enter the exclusive offer code BABE16. That's BABE16 because without it, no free stuff. That's BABE16 at adamandeve.com. Sometimes life is wonderful and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private Healthcare is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, give us a call at 800-231-9279. That's 800-231-9279. 800-231-9279. Welcome back to the Turnpike Sports. Dave Weishato with you here. Right now is part two of my interview with Martin Harris. Martin Harris is a longtime writer and reporter, a teacher in American studies at UNC Charlotte, and the author of the new book, Poker and Pop Culture. You know, one of the big stories about online poker a couple of years ago was the sharing of player pools through the interstate compacts. And I guess what has thrown a wrench in that was the reinterpretation of the Wire Act. Um, what do you see coming out of online poker in Pennsylvania? Do you think they'll be involved in some kind of interstate pact or from what you're hearing that could be on hold until this situation is sorted out or what have you heard or what do you think will happen? I'm, I'm, I haven't heard anything specifically. Um, but that is, I think that what you mentioned there is, is kind of a key element to the, to this question, uh, that reinterpretation of the Wire Act uh, that happened at the beginning, I guess the opinion, new opinion was made public at the beginning of 2019, and then it got challenged, as you know. Um, you know, the, the Wire Act, uh, I guess, for, for your listeners, it's this law from 1961 about betting on sports over phone lines, you know, uh, between the states. Um, and in 2011, there was an opinion from the DOJ that said, uh, that clarified that it only had to do with sports betting. It didn't have to do with other kinds of online gambling. And that's why New Jersey and a few states were able to start offering online gambling. Um, then this new interpretation came, which basically went back and said, no, actually it applies to everything, not just sports betting. Um, and then that, um, uh, you had sort of lottery commissions and people getting upset. And so in New Hampshire, the lottery commission filed suit. A district court judge ruled that, in fact, the Wire Act is only for sports betting and so basically vacated that opinion. Um, but the DOJ is appealing that. And so I tell all this sort of boring history just to uh, sort of clarify that we're in kind of a limbo situation. Yeah, It's probably going to go to the Supreme Court I'm thinking, I I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking actually by the late spring, we might get a ruling on that. And then we'll know once and for all. And probably, from what I'm hearing, it'll probably be a favorable ruling. I mean, it'll probably be favorable for, um, uh, as far as uh, that interpretation of the Wire Act, only applying to sports betting and not to all online gambling. uh, That would then release the pressure or ease it a bit from states like Pennsylvania and Michigan and West Virginia who have recently uh, passed legislation um, for them to start, you know, growing again. And and when working on, uh, in in the case of Michigan, for instance, going online at all because they've only just um, passed that legislation. Um, But that's going to be the key, sort of what that ruling is, I think. And then that will, we'll see after that. There, there, I mean, there's some online casinos in Pennsylvania that haven't launched yet, and they're basically just kind of waiting mm-hmm. to see what's going to happen with that. Um, and then you, you mentioned the interstate 
uh, the compacts between states. I think that's on hold as well. Um, so Pennsylvania maybe could get into a an agreement with New Jersey, Nevada, and Delaware and, and have something, but that's not going to happen until the, the ruling on this uh, uh, new opinion as well, it comes. Well, in, in your in your opinion, in for the future of online poker, how critical is interstate compacts? I mean, can online poker survive on a state-by-state -state basis without interstate co uh, compacts? Or, I mean, how crucial is it for the growth of online poker? I, I think it's everything. It's At the end of my book, I have uh, this poker and pop culture uh, I have a chapter with a, a real uh, sort of uh, boastful, uh, the last chapter is called Poker in the Future, um, as though I'm going to predict what's going to happen. Um, and actually, the last couple of chapters in the book, I talk about online poker in the U.S., and I'm kind of pessimistic about it, the way I talk about it. I, I make a comparison at one point to um, how we used to smoke on airplanes, <laughs> and uh, drive around without seatbelts. Um, that poker, <laughs> that online poker, almost is like that in, in the U.S., where it was something that we used to do, <laughs> yeah, right. and we took for granted, and it was allowed. And then, then we were told we can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's basically the experience for for most people right now in America, um, as far as online poker goes. The people who played it before 2011 or up till 2011. Um, aren't playing it now. Um, and I don't think, you know, it, I think that it's going to have to be several states, California, you know, New York, these these big states are going to have to get in. And then there's going to have to be that compact mm -hmm. to have the player pools for it to grow at all. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be a small, you know, mostly trivial kind of uh, recreation uh, and in the, in the large scheme of things, when it comes to just gambling and, and sports betting and everything else, that poker is always going to be very small. Well, um, uh, otherwise, I mean that's interesting. I mean, uh, here in New Jersey, the number one online casino is the Golden Nugget. It brings in as much revenue as the brick and mortar Golden Nugget does. Mm -hmm. Yet they do not offer online poker. Is that a bad signal to? Uh, other providers saying, you know what, why would we have to go to Pennsylvania and offer online poker? The other state has a number one online casino and they don't offer online poker. Is that a deterrent for some uh, operators? Yeah, I would imagine it should be. And it's, I mean, it's kind of the same, you know, poker's place, you know, in the casino, generally speaking, mm -hmm. is, is not a big one in terms of revenue. Um, you know, it had never been, like in the Nevada casinos over the decades, it was always, you know, less than 1% of the, the revenue was, was from any of the poker games. Um, and that everything, slots and everything else, was much more profitable. And that's that's got to be true. Uh, that's true online as well, that it's, uh, especially in a state that's not in an agreement with other states, and where you, have, you, you know it's going to be a small player pool, it's just going to be a, you know, it might be just kind of a negligible uh, revenue source. And so mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, perhaps be a deterrent because of that. Well, well, let me ask you something. In your opinion, do you think states and casino operators are doing enough to promote online poker? I, I, I'll, I'll tell you a story. A couple of years ago, we had online poker operators as advertisers on this show. They called up and says, you know what? We're still advertising with you, but can you switch over to our sports betting app? <laughs> so, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so oh, yeah. do you think they should, you know, I, I don't want to tell them how to do their business, but should they prioritize poker a little more in your opinion? Well, I mean, I'm a, I'm a person who I'm, I, I love poker. It's a, you know, I've sure. written a book about poker. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm very dedicated to the promotion of the game, but I don't, I don't uh, begrudge those kinds of decisions, and on a practical level, um, it just seems like, and it, it really is sort of a trend, generally speaking. Like the, all these people, and I'm I'm included. These people who wrote about online nothing but poker before, <laughs> now they're now they're writing about uh, sure. sports betting and all these other things, um, and that's just where the money is and the advertising and, and the revenue is coming from that, and so that's what's dictating. 
uh, where all this is going. So I don't, I mean, I don't know, you know, the, 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 the poker, you know, fan and, and the lover of the game in me wants to say, you know, I'd love to see a little more push happening, but I'm, I'm also practical and, mm-hmm. and I know that that's not, you know, that it, it's, there's something, um, a little bit idealistic about, about that. And so, uh, it doesn't surprise me. Well, as you said, uh, with regard to Pennsylvania, Poker Stars is already there. Um, do you expect to see more online operators in the coming year with regard to Pennsylvania? I think so. There were there were a couple that were supposed to, you know, we heard, we heard about it all year last year uh, that were supposed to to come and just haven't. And I'm not I'm not really up on exactly where they are. Um, in terms of launching, uh, but PokerStars got there first. But yeah, there should be a, at least uh, at least one or two others. I think probably this year. I imagine. Martin, I, I know we only have a couple of minutes, but I want to get to another state that you actually mentioned, and that's Michigan, who had a huge gambling expansion law put in place. Can you let us know what's going on in Michigan and what we can expect from the state regarding online gambling and online poker? Yeah, the last I've seen, in fact, there were stories this week about that. And we mentioned that, that Wire Act ruling, mm-hmm. how that's probably going to slow things down, maybe in a place like Michigan, uh, as they wait and see what happens uh, with that. But they have to go through the whole process of, of having the regulators come in. And this is what people, I think, a lot of times don't even realize how complicated all this, all this yeah. is. And you have... Um, you know, the, the legislation, you have to fight and fight and fight and finally get enough lawmakers to come on board and then have a governor who's not going to veto your your law, which happened in Michigan, actually, mm-hmm. at the end of the previous year. Um, and then a new governor came in and who actually signed the bill at the end of 2019. They had to go through the whole process and pass the law again. And the new governor did not veto it and signed it into law. And now, then you have to have the regulators who have all kinds of competing interests um, to think about uh, as they decide just exactly how it's going to work. And it sounds like that's not going to happen this year at all, that it'll yeah. be 2021, actually, before anything happens in Michigan um, in terms of launching. And so they just have to pin down all the all the details and, and decide who's going to get what. Um, so that's going to be a while. In states like Michigan, do you, do you expect to see um... – like a gradual rollout. I, I know a lot of states do their gradual things, you know, the online casinos, then online poker a couple months, then online sports betting. Do, do you think that's what's going to happen to Michigan, or are they just going to put all their products out at once? Uh, I, I really don't know. I I, I would imagine, um, I would, I would, I guess I would have to look at Pennsylvania as the, the, the most immediate model and say that they would be rolling things out gradually. Um, and not all at once. Um, so I, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing, um, you know, not only do the regulators and everybody, all that have, all the details have to be pinned down, but then you actually have to have, you know, the, the, the operators um, decide on their end, you know, who's going to get involved mm-hmm. and who's going to, who's going to go for it. And so, you know, that'll, that'll be as, as, as complicated. And so, I would say a gradual rollout, but I don't really know. What can we look forward to in 2020 as far as online casinos, poker, or sports betting? What states, in your opinion, should we be on the lookout for with regard to uh, big gambling news coming in the horizon? Well, I think sports betting will probably have the get the headlines most of the time um, as we see more states uh, coming on. And, and and passing legislation, and then the ones who there's still a few that have passed legislation that haven't launched, and so they'll probably be you know that'll be the kind of thing you'll see being reported on the most. Um, online gambling probably less so until after this Fire Act ruling uh, happens, um, but I think that that will probably be you know where the the emphasis is it's on sports betting. Um, and then, you know, I guess maybe the other, the other side of this is just what we were talking about earlier is just, just the mainstreaming of sports betting uh, that's happening, generally speaking. And we might see that reflected. And in, in, I think that might be the most interesting thing to look for is just how it sort of, as we watch, you know, March Madness and, you know, go through the, the summer and then get to football again and, and how uh, 
you know, sports betting becomes part of the conversation about how people talk about sports and watch sports and, you know, being mindful of the spreads and things uh, will be kind of foregrounded even more. And you know, I think that might be kind of interesting to watch. Mm-hmm. Martin, we're running out of time, but can you give out a website or a social media address so people can follow you and uh, find out what you're doing and what you're writing about? Yeah, my uh, Twitter handle is uh, Hard Boiled Poker, like hard boiled egg, okay. but hard boiled poker, or one word. And I think for people who are really interested in, in sports betting and other topics like this, um, there are a couple of sites I can recommend. There's Legal Sports Report that is kind of up on everything and, and, and what's going on in all the states. And so they're a nice one. Um, and then there's also uh, this PlayUSA.com. They have actually d- individual sites for different states. Um, and But you can just go to PlayUSA.com and then look up your, your state and if you're curious about what's happening. And they, they generally are just right on top of everything and, and are able to tell you sort of what's happening. So I would recommend those. Martin Harris, writer, teacher, and author of the new book, Poker and Pop Culture. Thanks for coming on and updating us on what's going on in the gambling world. Thanks a lot, Dave. Stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. Tax Solutions Now is a complimentary referral service that connects callers to companies that provide tax services. Money matters. If you owe thousands in back taxes to the IRS, how much can Tax Solutions Now save you? I pay less than I owe. That's right. Money matters. So call Tax Solutions Now and get the IRS off your back. Since 2014, Tax Solutions Now has been a leader in the tax resolution industry. Remove wage garnishments, property liens, fines, and penalties. Qualify for the Fresh Start program or even uncollectible status. How much can Tax Solutions Now save you? I owed the IRS over $10,000. I paid a fraction of what I owed. Call now to reduce or even eliminate your back taxes. I called Tax Solutions Now and got the IRS off my back. Thanks. You saved us a ton of money. Money matters. How much can Tax Solutions Now save you call now and find out call 800-683-7377-800-683-7377-800-683-7377 the turnpike sports book report And the Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book. Available anywhere in New Jersey, BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you get a risk-free bet up to $300 and 20 bonus dollars at BorgataCasino.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. We're just going to do a couple things for the book report uh, because... a couple of big things happened with the Super Bowl I, w- I would everything. assume the numbers for the sports books in the different states are out regarding the Super Bowl. And we'll talk about them in the <laughs> Super Bowl recap. Oh, okay. Segment. I jumped the gun on that one, huh? But okay. we'll, we'll, uh, well, last week when uh, we had already uh, taped uh, uh, Turnpike for press time, um, Nevada had released their, their figures for 2019. Okay. The books had brought in a handle of $5.31 billion dollars in 2019. Nice. Up from last year's record of 5.01 billion. So they're growing 9.5% revenue. So it's a growth. record. It's it's a record to a certain extent. Uh what was interesting, they threw this one out as well. In 2018, they had uh uh had revenue of 301 million. So both revenue and handle beat last year's. Okay. For uh the numbers for the year to year. Uh, what was interesting here? This was this was the record. Sports betting accounted for two point seven percent of the overall gaming revenue in twenty nineteen. That's an all time high mm-hmm. in their history. So they're they're growing the business. I guess it's maybe let, let competition from the East Coast. Oh, yeah, yeah, everyone thought that uh, 
sports betting would decrease in Nevada once other states got sports betting, but it's, it's actually spurred it on. I guess it's more popular now, and it's into the, uh, you know, the uh, more mainstream. public, more mainstream. It's in the public uh, lexicon now. All the gambling terms and Ooh, things lexicon. like that. Yeah. Where'd you get that word? So, uh, but you know, it's interesting. The sports betting only accounted for two point seven percent of the gambling revenue. Doesn't that show you how? big slots are for the gambling industry. Slots are king. Well, from Nevada, what I heard from a lot of operators, slots are about 88% of gambling revenue. Nevada's, so a, Nevada's a little different because the highest grossing game for Nevada is always Baccarat. And I don't even know how to play Baccarat. I, and it, I've seen it in Atlantic City, but I, I don't know how to play it. It's just one of those things where Baccarat in Nevada has always been the top game. And nothing's really changed for that. It's still one of the top games. I don't know if it's the top game anymore there, but I know they've had uh, always. It's been that type of. It's never been sports betting. It's never been. It's never even been slots really for in terms of uh, having uh, that being the top game, bringing in that much money. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I've always seen baccarat. It, it always. First off, I have. I don't even know what the correct pronunciation. is. I don't even baccarat, know how to spell it. I always, I always I put know. two T's or but two it, C's. It just. It, lo- it looks complicated i it, pr- it probably isn't you know but it, it just looks complicated i know there i should be reading books on it and see uh see if i can understand it. it it's online in new jersey so uh i i there's no excuse for me not knowing about it but you know it, it just it just looks strange to me yeah no it, it's a game where I, I i have to say maybe it's an acquired taste i guess so, so but uh nevada had new all-time highs and uh gaming revenues that sort of stuff for, yeah, good for Nevada. Let's go over to New Hampshire because I have never seen a governor tweet so much about sports betting. Governor he's, Sununu. I think he's uh, taking shots at Massachusetts. I think that's what he's doing. Yeah. Massachusetts and Maine are the two uh, Maine, Maine. I still don't, I, I don't understand get Maine. what Maine is doing. And I, and I certainly don't get with what Massachusetts is doing. But, uh, well, Governor Sununu is uh, reaping the benefits because uh, you, you want a sports bet in New England, you have two choices, New Hampshire to the north or Rhode Island to the south. Yeah, and uh, it's it'll be interesting to see exactly what Massachusetts does. They are still not – they don't seem to be interested in getting sports betting going in that state. But according to the governor, since launching less than a month ago, maybe a little bit more than a month ago now that we're taping this, uh, more than $15.8 million has been wagered with 27,000 unique users and over 750,000 wagers made. Great. Since they're only online, they can track that stuff. So they're only online now. There are plans, from what I understand, retail in the spring. Retail in the spring. Okay. The, Just not- in time when the Red Sox will suck. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you have to educate yourself on the other MLB MLB teams, New England. So uh, wait, I don't wait. know if you're going to be winning a lot of money with the Red Sox. According to some of the books, I know Caesars dropped the Red Sox down from twenty to one to twenty five to one. Okay, and well, Dodgers well, are now up to four to one. We'll talk about the Red Sox. As soon as I heard that MLB is investigating them, this was a couple of weeks ago, in, investigating them for the cheating scandal. You know, which I guess stemmed from Houston and Alex Cora got fired. As soon as I heard that, I bet the under of total wins for this season. I, I bet it, I, what was it, 90 and a half, I think? 91 and a half. I, I think I got like 90, but uh, I, I I haven't looked at it yet since Mookie Betts and David Price were shipped out, so I have to take a look at that. Yeah, I, I would still go under with them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. But uh, it, it, it'll it be interesting to see exactly how the books handle this trade, whether it makes, you know, I, I, want, I want to see if anyone's going to drop them further than just you know, five to five odds, basically. But uh, going into two two uh, online sports books have done some things here too. So uh, we're going to talk BetMGM. Okay. Uh, BetMGM is now in two states. They have launched their mobile West Virginia sports betting app. Hey, finally, West Virginia is back up, huh? Yep. All right. And and also Wheeling, West Virginia, uh, Delaware North, the two two casinos and the app there, they're going to be launching as well. Okay. But uh, MGM now is in two states. They are partnered with the Greenbrier, which, as everyone knows, also has the deal with FanDuel. So the second skin that's owned by the Greenbrier is now you have FanDuel, and now you have BetMGM. And supposedly BetMGM is actually – gaining steam across the different states, and also New Jersey's doing extremely well. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had that deal with Yahoo Sports. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how BetMGM grows because of that fan, that 
customer base. Can't say fan base. Mm-hmm. Customer base for uh, Yahoo Sports. Uh, by the way, speaking of online sports books, and we were just talking about the uh, Boston Red Sox win totals. Um, I'm not going to say which sports book I'm on now online, but uh, the Boston Red Sox are off the board right now. Really? Yeah. No. No future bet yet. So uh, this is that uh, makes sense. Yep. This is it's very soon after the trade. So um, well, I remember when the Astros. Uh, punishment was handed out. They were taken off the board for a while too, mm-hmm. so it, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they come back with. Okay. Um, but BetMGM is also planning two more states. They're in New Jersey and West Virginia. Uh, from what I understand, Pennsylvania's coming soon. Okay, and also they're going to be. They just got approval in Nevada, and they're expected to go live just in time for March Madness. So, uh, yeah, uh, here it is. Uh, they also have another one in the works in Indiana. They, uh, the the thing with Indiana, they are waiting on approval. They've gotten approval for two other states, Pennsylvania and Nevada. So we'll we'll see exactly uh, when they launch, but they're planning a good rollout pretty soon. So uh, it'll it'll be uh, there's going to be some more competition coming in with the online sports books and points bet. Not only did they get a market access deal for Kansas, uh, there's no sports betting in Kansas yet. Yeah, but they have yet. a market access. No. They did it with the Kansas Crossing Casino Company, Kansas Crossing. Uh, it's located uh, in southeast Kansas. That's their, the company they did the deal with, the Kansas Crossing Casino. And it, it borders Oklahoma, Missouri, and Arkansas. Okay. So that may draw on f- three other states' customer base. Hmm. So whenever that happens, whenever sports wagering happens, points bet's in a good position right now. Oh, yeah. No, Absolutely. Uh, by the way, another update. I, I looked at another online sports book. Uh, Boston Red Sox are are off the board on that one too. For yeah, for, they're going to be <laughs> for uh, be. Uh, total games won for the twenty twenty season. Oh yeah, no, it's it. So I, well, it's, it's, it's very early. So uh, check back later in the day, and you'll probably see them. This is Wednesday when we're talking about. So probably check them when this comes out. Maybe they'll be up. And last but not least, for points bet, they launched in Iowa right before the Super Bowl, which is a good time. Uh, the only the only problem with Iowa sports betting mobile wise, it's an in person registration state. You have to go to the the host casino. Okay. Uh, you got to go to Catfish Pen Casino in Burlington to complete the verification process. Okay. Uh, and then uh, after that, you can do it from anywhere in the state. Well, I hope Iowa does better in sports betting than they are at running a caucus. So uh, hopefully, yeah, no, uh, that that was a mess. <laughs> that'll work. So, and the Turnpike Sports Book Report was brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book available anywhere in New Jersey, BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you get a risk-free bet up to $300 and 20 bonus dollars at BorgataCasino.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Up, oh, stick around because after this, we're going to have our Super Bowl recap. See what bets we won on, lost on, and uh, talk a little bit of Atlantic City. Stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. When it comes to online sports betting, PlaySugarHouse.com offers players one of the best experiences in the state of New Jersey. PlaySugarHouse.com offers millions of betting options on the sports you love. They offer live in-game betting on sporting events worldwide, money line bets, point spreads, prop bets, play-by-play bets, and many more. All at PlaySugarHouse.com, your new home for sports betting in New Jersey. Take advantage of one of their 12 easy deposit methods to get in on all the action. And now, when you sign up at PlaySugarHouse.com using our promo code PIKE, they'll match your first deposit up to $250. More bets, better odds at PlaySugarHouse.com. Sign up today at PlaySugarHouse.com and don't forget to use our promo code PIKE to take advantage of their first deposit match up to $250. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. We'll get right back to the show, but I want to take a minute to talk to you about Bean Genius. How would you like your coffee delivered right to your door every month, maybe two times a month? Well, now that can happen with Bean Genius. Bean Genius sells freshly roasted coffee from some of the best independent coffee roasters in the country at BeanGenius.com. And Bean Genius actually learns their customers' individual taste preferences, then suggests future coffee blends for them. 
Well, how do they do that? Well, this is the cool thing about Bean Genius. Over at BeanGenius.com, they use an algorithm which learns the coffee flavors you like and then pairs up what you like with the coffee that they have in stock. And it's all based upon you. Every time you order, the system learns. The system learns your preferences as you go along and order more and more coffee. And now, all our listeners at Turnpike Sports can get a special offer. You head on over to BeanGenius.com slash subscription, and you'll be able to get 10% off your purchase when you use our promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E, at checkout. That's 10% off at BeanGenius.com slash subscription with promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. BeanGenius.com, the smart specialty coffee subscription service. And this portion of Turnpike Sports is brought to you by PointsBet.com. PointsBet has one of the best sign-up offers in New Jersey. Go to PointsBet.com and sign up using our promo code PIKE. That's P-I-K-E. And when you deposit $50, you'll receive a $100 bonus. That's deposit $50, and you bet with $150. So sign up today at PointsBet.com using our promo code PIKE and start having some real fun. That's promo code PIKE. P-I-K-E. PointsBet. Stay sharp. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. As everyone and their mother knows that the Super Bowl just happened. Yep. Uh, good game. Oh, it was a great game. Uh, I, I, I was feeling confident going into the uh, fourth quarter because uh, I had San Francisco. I didn't feel confident about the over at all, but uh, at the end there I was sweating it out a little bit. But um, Well, yep. it, it was interesting. A lot of states launched just in time. Yep. And uh, some of the states have been reporting just the Super Bowl handle. Okay. Not a, n- not everyone. Only nine states so far have reported. Okay. Uh, big one was Nevada. Sure. 154 million in Super Bowl handle. That's up six percent from last year. Okay. And they reported about a four and a half million dollar profit. Okay. They're the only ones. Oh, really? So far, they're the only ones. Uh, well, even with that prop bet, that uh, that Pat Mahomes rushing prop bet that everyone lost money. on, <laughs> they made money. They had one of their. Seems best. like every sports book in every state would make money on that prop bet. From what I'm reading, Nevada Nevada sports books have said they had a great day in terms of making money. Yep, a lot of money was paid out. So don't don't get them wrong. They uh, fifty 150 million is nothing to sneeze at and they made uh, 4 million 4 and a half million off that. New Jersey came in second. Not a close second. Mhm. F- uh, 54 million. Okay. Uh that's up 55% from last year so they did grow the market a bit. Yeah, it's going in the right direction. Yep. But they had a profit of negative 4 and a half million. <laughs> that's that's 7.8% negative hold. Okay. So a lot of smart betters in New Jersey. I don't I'm not one I, of them, apparently, but uh, supposedly, a lot of smart better. Supposedly, there's a lot of futures mixed in with that, possibly. You know, Nevada doesn't include the futures. Yeah, they, they uh, compute it differently. Uh, yeah. Nevada keeps out the futures. New Jersey puts the futures in their Which makes me wonder whether or not New Jersey had a lower hold or a lower handle. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But also, Pennsylvania took in $30 million. Okay, and, good uh, for Pennsylvania. Yep, online accounted for almost 80% of that handle. Yeah, well, I, New Jersey did not oh, report the online breakdown yet. Oh, they they haven't reported. No, it. But it's got to be around that. I, I can percentage. tell you, uh, we were in a lot of the sports books in Atlantic City, and not not once did I go to the window. I I bet on my phone. So yeah, uh, we started out while, while I was in the sports book. I bet on my phone. And what so. was interesting, we went to Ocean Casino, then we went down to um, Hard Rock. Well, we first started in Tropicana in at Tropicana. William Hill. Tropicana. William Hill. I, I, I always think, you know, ocean first because we do the end yeah. and come down. But <laughs> Tropicana is beautiful, as a matter of uh, fact. It's a, it's a great sports book. William Hill very did comfortable. a great very job with it. Yeah, uh, That was busy. It was very busy. On. Uh, at 1 o'clock, it was, uh, it was a good crowd there. They were getting their bets in early, so which was good. And, uh, no, it looked like they were uh, – I, I saw the sign. I, I guess you had to reserve seats. I mean, you, 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 you can seats. certainly stand up and watch the game, but you had to reserve seats, and that was the case for everywhere. And you got to like every place you went, they had somebody walking around. Do you want to place a bet? Do you want to place a bet? Do you want to register for the online? Yeah, site? Well, well, that was the big thing. I mean, it's, especially last year, uh, they go around and registering. I, people I got for hit their in three site. places. I got hit in Tropicana. I, I got hit. Once. I got hit in Ocean Casino, and I got hit in uh, the book. 
Uh, yeah, I got asked in the book if I already placed my bet, and I said, yeah, no, I have the William Hill sports book on my phone, so yeah, I did. Yeah, no, but when so. we when we separated the film and do, do photos and everything else, I got hit a couple times into different places. Okay. So right. everyone was pushing the online casinos. Again, uh, but going back to the numbers, Pennsylvania brought in $30 million. They reported a loss of $3.3 million. All right. Uh, the other states. Let's just run down these real quick. Rhode Island. Five point five million in handle with about sixty thousand bets placed on the game. Uh, Seventy five of which were for more than five thousand dollars. They actually had that breakdown ready for everybody. Interesting. That's down from last year's Super Bowl of six and a half million. That's because of no Patriots. Uh, or, so wait, uh, did they? Did the sports books make out, or did they no. lose it? Okay, <laughs> no. Uh, Oregon had two million dollars in handle. No, no word on what the revenue was for them. Delaware two point one, West Virginia had three point nine million. Wow, yeah, that's big for West Virginia. That's great. Yeah, well, it's it's great seeing them back into the mix here because sure. they don't really have anything after pro football. They have what West Virginia basketball. Well, I, w- basketball. I, w- I would think March Madness will that be huge be everywhere. So. Yeah, so I think that's why everyone's trying to get their mobile apps up and running in West Virginia because Absolutely. that's a college that's a college sport state yeah. more so than pro. Um, the ad revenue was off the charts again, four hundred million in advertising revenue. Um, at uh, InBev, Anheuser Busch, the company that owns Anheuser Busch, was the biggest spender. Uh, they spent forty four and a half million dollars on the ad space. Uh, Pepsi also had a whole bunch of commercials. They also, since they also own Doritos and Sabra, you saw them a lot. Yeah. Um, but the big thing was the prop bets. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I did pretty well with prop bets. You know, I, I normally don't do prop bets during the football year, but, you know, Super Bowl is prop bet day, so well, I did a lot of prop what, bets. From what I understood, Nevada doesn't do prop bets year-round. They do them for the big events. Oh, really? New Jersey okay. does them year-round. Pennsylvania does them year-round. I think Nevada's going to change that once the online sportsbooks come into play. Yeah. But what I noticed going into the Super Bowl, and I was receiving updates from the different sports books throughout the day, the amount of prop bets that they were pushing. Um, you had William Hill had a thousand prop, uh, had four thousand prop bets, I think it was. Uh, yeah, they had a lot. No, no, it was a thousand prop bets. Points bet had four thousand outcomes for their prop bets. Okay, so everyone was touting what they were doing next. Uh, Unibet had some promos going on. Yeah, not as much as the other ones, but they're not a as big a player as these uh, as Fanduel, DraftKings, DraftKings, and Fanduel. Both had a ton of prop bets. Yeah, I, I did Both a lot. Were interesting. I did a lot of prop bets with Points Bet and William Hill. That yeah. was primarily where my prop bets went. I so. did uh, Points Bet and Sugar House. Okay, and Sugar House some, had some interesting ones. Nothing out of the ordinary. Um, I, I noticed a lot of uh, money went on the t- coin toss. I did not do that. I never do that. I, I don't. I don't understand that. But uh, where were we? Where there was? Uh, I think we were in the book in Bally's. The book in Bally's. Where we were watching the coin toss, and it came out tails, and a lot of people cheered. <laughs> well, so it looked, I think we tweeted out, apparently a lot of people had uh, tails, uh, bet on tails. Well, what was interesting was as soon as the coin coin flip happened, I saw a lot of people after it came out tails tweeting out the old phrase, tails never fails. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so was, I've never heard that. That, but, that is yeah. something in the sports betting community that, yeah, everyone right. uh, well, tweets guess, out for I that guess stuff. That's a tip. Always go with tails. And, and then you had the end of the game causing what everyone is calling the well, massive bad beat. Yeah, that's the bad beat of all bad beats in a Super Bowl where Pat Mahomes, I, I think the over under for his rushing figure got up as big as 36 and a half yards. I think some books started at 27. I think it was bet up all the way to 36 and a half. Prior to the final possession, he had 44 yards rushing, which if you had the over, you were perfect. You were great. You had the over in basically all the books. Uh, yeah. And and when uh, during the last three uh, – well, he had – they took all four downs, but the first three downs where he knelt down, I guess he wanted to eat more clock, so he kept moving backwards. He ran back, yeah. And they lost a total of 15 yards, which put him at 29 yards rushing. And that was the under. So if you took the over, you were great coming into the last possession, but after that, you lost. So. Yeah, but, you know, some of the books are... The you books know, won big on that one, I heard. Yeah, a lot of the books were happy about that. Books won big. But the uh, the guys over at PointsBet 
Good uh, for them. Yeah, good for the points. sponsor of this segment. Yep. Uh, they actually decided to convene their karma committee. I love the karma committee. And they are they are going to be refunding all the bets that were placed on the uh, over. The over of the Patrick Mahomes. Of that rushing. one specific prop. So uh, thank you, points bet. Yep. And, uh, you know, there's, we've been getting updates from all the different books on all the different prop bets, and really there's a lot of them to go through. I mean, uh, How, how'd you do in your prop bets? I can tell you what ones I did well on. I, I did. I had a prop bet where the away team, which is the 49ers, would first score would be a field goal. I won that. I won uh, with Jimmy Garoppolo would be the first to throw a uh, – did I get that one touchdown? Yeah, you yeah, got Jimmy touchdown. Garoppolo through through the first, first touchdown. touchdown. I got that one. I got the. Um, remember last week I was talking about my more interesting one that the two minute warning would not fall on exactly two minutes. You got that in the second half. I right? got that in the second half because the two minute warning stopped at one fifty eight. Got that. So I got the longest play from scrimmage for Kansas City. So uh, no, it was. Uh, I and I won my. Um, I had. The away team, which is the 49ers, would, I went with the over two and a half sacks, and they got three sacks. Well, so I did pretty well. The two I did for the show, the um, the two-point conversion did not happen. Yeah. I wish it did. There was a couple places. There it were could have a done couple it. places where that could have happened. Yeah. And <laughs> so, uh, so. the other one I did was, um, I can't even remember what I did with that one. I don't have it in front of me right now. I don't but, have it. In. But um, I didn't win that one either. Okay. So, uh, but I did win the number of interceptions. The over under was one and a half. There yeah, were you two. got that one. And uh, the other one. Actually, there were three. There were so, three. I'm sorry. Three. At the end there, yeah. Um, and I won a couple other ones that, you know, uh, weren't, you know, two major uh, things. I made money on them. I'll give them that. But they weren't huge uh, wins for me. Uh, everyone who picked uh, orange for the Gatorade uh, splash, congratulations. Yeah, it was orange. Uh, so, I mean, there was a lot of stuff, uh, the player to score the last touchdown, which everyone seemed to be really surprised at Damien Williams. Yeah. Over at William Hill, they paid seven to one on that plus 700. Wow. So there was, by some, the way, he should have won MVP, but he should have, uh, he should have, <laughs> but, but you know, you can't argue with Pat Mahomes, what he did in the fourth quarter. So here's another interesting one. I thought from William Hill, cause I have their list in front of me. It's like five pages long here. Uh, the exact margin of victory. They actually had that up there, uh, seven to two odds. By the way, Darren, they, had, they had it in bands. By the way, Darren Ravel from the Action Network had a story. Uh, apparently, some better uh, won two prop bets, and he tweeted out the um, the tickets. He had one prop bet that the Kansas City Chiefs would score thirty one points, and then he had another prop bet that the Forty ers would score twenty points. And with those two prop bets, he won over two hundred sixty thousand dollars for that. That's some great prop bet action there. Yep. No. So, <laughs> so uh, it's. Uh, but uh, already the odds are now out for fifty five Super Bowl fifty five. Really? Already? I, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, the Chiefs and Niners are both co favorites. Interesting. Along with the Ravens. Uh, well, yeah, I would think the Ravens would be in there somewhere. I don't know. The Ravens seem to like seem to disappear in the playoffs well, i mean I, I don't know i maybe there's a time off that they needed that stuff. yeah you know when you're playing great you probably you know you, you always want the buy to you know rest and relax and recuperate but you when you were on a roll like the ravens i think that buy really kind of hurt them yeah and uh in terms of the futures jets are at 60 to 1 right now wow and the eagles okay uh, let me find them on the list here eagles are going at Fifteen to one. Okay, so get Sounds your about get right. your futures in right now. Yeah, right. And I am going to take a shot on XFL soon. Uh, yeah, no, it's coming up this Sunday. A lot, so. a lot of states, oh, are, Saturday and Sunday, yeah, by the way. A so. lot, a lot of states are offering. I think six states right now are offering XFL bets. I, I see them on the online sports books right now. Yeah, so and uh, I do not know how to bet them because I don't even know who's playing. I, I don't I, know the players. See, that's the thing. I, I want to know how they came up with these lines because I need to see at least a game to see how these things play. At I, least I don't know. an exhibition game. They don't have that either, yeah, I noticed, which, which is interesting. Maybe the NFL is taking a cue from that. Maybe they're going to get rid of uh, preseason if that works. So, But uh, NFL is done, XFL starting. Still plenty of basketball and hockey to bet. Lots of basketball, lots of hockey. March Madness coming up. March Madness. And the know, draft. You can bet on the draft in certain The draft, states. yep. 
And uh, hey, and the MLB hot stove is uh, just starting to heat up. Yeah, so, uh, it got, it got off to a good happens. start. Like I said, there's some fun times coming in the world of sports. So uh, join us next week, and we'll see you next time on the Turnpike.